This video is about slope. Now, a good way to think about slope is just it's the steepness of a line. I'm sure you're familiar with the idea of a ski slope. The best working definition of slope is rise over the run. I'm sure you've heard that also. Rise refers to the vertical change and run refers to the horizontal change of a line. Take a look at this line right here. I want to see what movement will get me from this point right here up to this point right here. I'm only allowed to move strictly vertically or horizontally. According to the definition, I must move vertically first. So to get from here up, I need to go up one, two, three, four, up four. From there, I'm going to go to the right one, two, three, four, five, six. That's to the right six. Now, like standard number line movement, up is going to refer to a positive number. So this is positive four. Right is positive, positive six. This is to the fraction two-thirds. The slope of this line is two-thirds. That means for every two steps up, you make three steps over. Two steps up, three steps over. Now you might think, why did you count from the bottom point to the top point? Could I count the other way? And yes, you can. But you still have to do your vertical movement first. So it's really not a rise, it's a fall. I go down one, two, three, four, down four, and then I go to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six. Down is going to be a negative four. Left is going to be a negative six. A negative over a negative gives us a positive, which will reduce to two-thirds. So when you count slope off of a graph, it doesn't matter if you count from the bottom point to the top point or vice versa. This one, I'm going to count from here to here. This is up one. That's a positive one. From there, I'm going to go to the left one, two, three, four. Left four is a negative four. Now, one over negative four is the same thing as just a negative one fourth. Now, I could count this the other way. I could have started here and gone down one which is a negative one, and from there go to the right four. Put this horizontal and think about doing your slope to get from here to here. Do I have any kind of rise? No, that's why I have zero over x. I mean, in this case, it's one, two, three, four. It really doesn't matter what this is because zero divided by anything is zero. Any horizontal line has a slope of zero, horizontal zero. The situation on the vertical line is a little bit different. This does have a vertical change. So in this case, I might have gone up one, two, three, four, five. Up five is positive, but I have no horizontal change. That gives me this fraction, five over zero. That is undefined. The slope of a vertical line is undefined. Don't get these two things confused. They are not the same. Some people think they are just because there's no slant to the line, but horizontal is zero. Vertical line is undefined. You may wonder why you're not allowed to divide by zero. Well, it's a fact. You can't divide by zero, but here's the explanation of why you can't. Think back to plain old grade school. Every multiplication fact, like 5 times 3 equals 15, has what's called two related division facts. One of those related division facts is 15 divided by 5 must equal 3. And the other one is 15 divided by 3 must equal 5. That's how you learned your division facts back in the old days. Well, let's write another multiplication fact, like 6 times 0 equals 0. One of the related division facts makes sense. 0 divided by 6 is 0. 0 divided by anything is 0. But this is the weird one. 0 divided by 0 equals 6? That doesn't make sense. That's why this is called undefined. Here's a little recap on that. 0 divided by anything is 0. But anything over zero is our undefined. And here's a silly little phrase to help you remember that. Zero on the top is fine. See, zero on the top of the fraction is fine. We get an answer. But zero on the bottom is undefined. Think about undy being like under. Zero on the bottom is undefined. So when you see zero in the bottom, that's where you get the undefined. You get the undefined from your vertical line. Slope can be either positive that's a positive slope going up from left to right. Negative, this is going down from left to right. Or it can be zero, which is your horizontal. Or it can be undefined, which is your vertical line. There is a slope formula. 
and you have to be able to do the arithmetic on this. The slope formula is this, and you do need to memorize this. It is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 equals your slope. Now, that's the way most books write the slope. There's nothing fancy about this order. I also wrote it as y sub 1 minus y sub 2 over x sub 1 minus x sub 2. You can think of it that way. I will do it both ways, and then you decide what you want to do. Now, what does this x sub 1 and x sub 2 refer to? It's just the idea that this is my first point, so this is my x sub 1, and this is my y sub 1. This is my second point, so this is my x sub 2, and this is my y sub 2. All we have to do is take these numbers and plug them into the formula. So if I do the first one, I'm looking at y sub 2, which in this case is 3, minus y sub 1, which is negative 1. And yes, there are two negatives in a row. The first minus is there because the formula says to subtract. The second one is there because that's a negative 1. Common mistake is to drop off those extra negatives. On the bottom, x sub 2, which is 3, minus, because that's what the formula says, x sub 1, which is negative 3. At this point, this is plain old integer arithmetic. Minus a minus gives me a plus 4. Minus a minus gives me a plus 6, which gives me 2 thirds. That may look familiar, and it should. This is the graph I had for you on the first screen. Now, these numbers, negative 3, negative 1, that's that point right there. 3, 3 is that point right there. I want to show you why the slope formula works. When we counted from here up, we went up 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the 4, and then we went from there over to the right 6. There's your 6. So the top is counting for you your vertical change, and the bottom is counting for you your horizontal change. Now, just to show you, I could have gone in the other direction. So here's my line. You might also want to, when you draw your line, put the two minuses there to remind you that's what you're doing with the formula. This direction says do y sub 1 minus y sub 2. So this would be negative 1 minus y sub 2, which is 3. The bottom has x sub 1, which is negative 3, minus x sub 2, which is 3. This one I need to think about making both those plus a negative. Negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4. Negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6, which reduces to 2 thirds. This is analogous to counting the slope in the other order like we did on the first screen. Here is a third thing to think about or a third way to do this. Some people get confused about the formula and they end up doing, let's say, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 on the top, but then they do the wrong direction on the bottom. Here's something you can do so that you don't get caught up with the directions, and that is write your points on top of each other. Draw a line. Put your minuses in between. And now just work your way from the top down, right here. Got to start from the back end because the formula says y over x. So this is negative 1, and the 3 goes in that spot. On the bottom, same thing, negative 3 in the first spot, 3 in the other spot, which is exactly what I wrote there. But in this one, I'm not thinking about y sub 1, y sub 2, x sub 1, x sub 2. All I'm doing is writing the points on top of each other subtracting the back end and putting it on the top, subtract the front end and put it on the bottom. So let's do a couple more of these. We're finding the slope. I just wrote the formula up there for you. I'm going to do it this way on this one. I'm going to put the 4 one underneath, cross that out, draw my line, and put my minus in between. Then just work my back end right straight down. 6 goes here, 1 goes there. In the next two slots, negative 3 goes here, 4 goes there, do your arithmetic. 6 minus 1 is just 5, and negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. If you'd like, I can do the formula. Let's do this one. y sub 2 minus y sub 1. y sub 2 is this one. So that's 1 minus 6 over 4 minus negative 3. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Minus a minus 3 makes a positive 7. These are equal. As I stated before, you can have the minus top or bottom. So, sticking with my first way, put the 2, 6 underneath here, so work your way down. Negative 1 goes here, 6 goes there, 4 goes in the first slot, 2 goes there, negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7, 4 minus 2 is 2. When we look at this one, if I do my 1 and my 2 right there, minus, minus, work your way down, 
Put the top two here, the bottom two there. Work your way down. Five, one. Two minus two is zero. Five minus one is four. And you need to go one more step. Zero divided by anything is zero. We'll talk about this in a second. I want to finish this one before I go to the next screen. Same kind of setup. Let's put our three and our negative one underneath here. Put our minuses. Work your way down to negative one. Three, three. Two minus negative one on the top gives me three. The three minus three on the bottom is zero, which is undefined. These, the back numbers are the same. You don't have to take the time to graph it. You don't have to take the time to do the arithmetic. You can just go straight to the fact that it's a horizontal line and its slope is zero. Same reasoning over here. Notice the first two numbers are the same. If the x values are the same, it's going to turn into a vertical line and the slope is undefined.